Hi, Liberators. This is Tiffany Coleman with yet another episode of Interesting People. Um, I'm excited and privileged to have a person that I have known for years. Um, mm -hmm. She is a friend of my family and a friend of mine. I want to introduce to some uh, Dr. Alice Freeman. She is a certified naturopath and nutritionist. She is the CEO of Healthy Heart Plus and the CEO of Healthy Heart Plus 2, which is actually a nonprofit um, where she does work with women um, about, um, and breastfeeding. Um, it's a, an operation called Mommies, Babies, Daddies, and Bellies. And she is also an ecological, ecological and custodian and cultural custodian, and we'll get into that a little bit later, um, of humanity and divinity. It is my privilege and my honor to welcome um, and to introduce you all to Dr. Alice Freeman. Welcome to the show. Thank you, Tiffany. Thank you. She is the newly hooded Dr. Alice Freeman. She just got her doctoral degree from uh, my alma mater, the San Diego Proctor School of Theology. So it is yes. a privilege and an honor to have you with, with us today. Thank you so much. Yes, it's a privilege to be here with you. <laughs> um, so we are just going to get right into it, uh, Ms. Alice. Um, as Ms. Alice is what I've called her uh, over <laughs> the years, and I think that's what I'm going to stick yeah. with. Um, <laughs> that's right. That's right. That's right. Uh, Ms. Alice, what is nutrition? Because health is so important, and nutrition is a word that we hear circulating, but I think we kind of want to define it um, and so we can know what we're talking about. So what is nutrition? Well, nutrition is primarily, and this is from a scientific perspective, the science of foods, foods that obtain phytochemicals and phytonutrients uh, and they many, many other nutrients that are necessary for the sustainability of humanity. Okay. My okay. definition of nutrition is primarily having access of substance to sustain all living things. Okay. Because water has a form of nutrition because water won't work without oxygen. Mm. Fruit won't work without enzymes. Vegetables will not work without fiber. And so these are substances that we need as humanity and every living thing. Flowers need what? A form of nutrition. Mm -hmm. Vitamin D that comes from the synergizes. The synergy from the sun to the plant gives it the new nutrients to sustain its life. So everything that's living is directly integrated with nutrition. Okay. So that's what nutrition is. Okay. And it's in the elements of the earth. Nutrition is in the sun. Nutrition is in the water. Nutrition is in everything that's green from the ground, the trees, and the vines. Mm -hmm. Nutrition. Okay. So it, it sounds like everything has its own like nutritional system too, doesn't now, it? Mm -hmm, that's right. It's all nutritional value, the way God has created it in this earth to sustain living life. Mm, okay. So. And so that's why Leviticus 17, 11 is so important because it's powerful. It says uh, the life of the blood is what the life of the flesh is in the blood. Mm -hmm. The life of the flesh is in the, so the blood is our nutritional con conduit that mm -hmm. takes everything our body needs to every cell, every capillary, every organ, every vein. That's what the blood does. Okay. The blood is a conduit or a vehicle to feed nutrition to our bodies through the blood. The same way for a plant, mm -hmm. the chlorophyll is the bloodline that feeds the nutrients to the plant. Okay. Just like with water, the yeah. oxygen yeah. is the nutrient that feeds the life to the water. Mm -hmm. Because when the water doesn't have oxygen, it's stagnant. And when it's stagnant, it builds bacteria. And bacteria, bad bacteria, builds disease. It fosters or breeds disease. 
It's the same way for a plant and it's the same way for humanity mm -hmm. and all living things. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so is it safe to say that you can tell how healthy somebody is by just looking at blood or doing their blood work or? Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. That's why doctors can't make determinations of diagnosis until they do blood tests. Yes. Gotcha. Gotcha. That, mm -hmm. So, yeah. Isn't that powerful? So yeah, Leviticus 17, 17, 11 says the life of the flesh is in the blood. And so doctors don't know anything about your inner ecology until they take your blood. Mm-hmm. So, okay. So, so now when we come, when we come back around and talk about people, um, what are, okay, well, I guess I'll just go into the second question that we can come back around. What are some of the best ways that we can take care of our own bodies? Like what can we do to take care of ourselves? The best way to take care of yourself is with this, your hands. Okay. Your hands are the stewards of your body. Okay. What you okay. feed yourself, how you touch yourself, what you put on yourself, and how you nurture yourself. Okay. Your hands. So your hand, and then you also touched your 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 head. So it, it says that there's something that we can do to take care of our minds as well. Yes. That's right. Mm -hmm. Okay. By being intimate. When I was a little girl, I don't know. You probably had that experience too when I didn't feel good, my mother would put my head on her lap and she mm. would rub my temple. You probably had your mother to rub your head, the mm -hmm. side of your head as a little girl. Mm -hmm. And particularly when there was some sort of trauma, your hands are powerful. Mm -hmm. They're the stewards for healing. When you feed yourself, rather than eating at different places where people hygienic, practices are different sure. where you're ex susceptible to certain things but your hands are your stewards so they're going to make sure you're going to make sure that you put the best inside of your system particularly when you realize that you are the steward over your body and your hands they're part of that consecrated ministry for your body Gotcha. So we shouldn't have to tell people to wash their hands. We shouldn't. <laughs> we shouldn't. We shouldn't. So when so in if we can just kind of go off, uh, go go. Uh, we're not going to go too far off of eating that. So what are some of the things that we should be putting in our bodies, especially with all that's going on in the world right now? What are some of the things that we should be putting into our bodies to take care of ourselves? Okay, so you know that. I'm like an apologetic and I use, I normally like to associate my thoughts and our daily bread to scripture. Sure. So I believe that God in his infinite wisdom took a clump of dirt, a mm -hmm. soil and blew it into it, the breath of life, mm -hmm. called you humanity, placed you in the garden for the provisions of your Matthew 6, 11, your daily bread. Mm -hmm. And so if you're made from this cosmic, ecological rich soil you have a responsibility to eat after your likeness because i remember a young woman about five years ago told me i got it miss freeman i got it life extension to life extension so when you go back to the origin of where you came from and you eat after your likeness mm -hmm. you will sustain good health in your body so that and that's what sense. Tiffany Coleman, yeah. <laughs> and then we were able to substantiate it, Tiff, because we went back to Genesis 129, where the scripture clearly says, let your seed be your meat. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You remember that revelation? Mm -hmm. Let your seed be your meat. Mm -hmm. So you're entitled to variations because God tells us to worship him and the beauty of his holiness. But here we go back to grace and we go back to harnessing the power that we have. Because mm -hmm. we have free choices, but this power is harnessed by wisdom. And wisdom always brings you back to your origin. 
So it would make sense to me, life extension to life extension. So From the easy. ground, the trees, and the vines. It's so easy. Mm -hmm. So the growing living things is what we should be eating. Yeah. Not just now, Yes, but... a combination. Mm -hmm. It's a combination. And it's a combination of those growing living things. So if you're going to eat something that stays inside of your system 12 hours, you need something that's going to stay inside of your system at least two to three. And that's why green salads are good mm -hmm. because they're going to help you to metabolize what's going to be in your system for at least 12 hours. Wow. Okay. Okay, so green salad. Yeah. So, of course, spinach, yeah. romaine lettuce. Oh, yeah, um, everything. Mm -hmm. Arugula. Everything that's green. Okay, everything that's green. Got God it. has given us permission to use, to cleanse the blood, to build the blood, and reoxygenate the blood. Because uh -huh. we know the life of who we are is in where? The blood. The blood. Uh -huh. Leviticus 17, 11. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Okay. Um, so, and I remember one time I was just on the spinach kick and I was just eating mm -hmm. spinach everywhere I could find it. And I remember I had some blood work done and my blood was just so, I could see the iron in it. Like you could yes. see. Isn't it powerful? It's amazing. Mm -hmm. It's amazing. Um, we are fearfully and wonderfully made. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But what we've done is we've taken we brought in the science and we've taken out the spirituality of governing and honoring our bodies. Mm -hmm. And it's so disheartening, you know, Yeah. to see that we can trust in any and everything else with the exception of trusting God Yeah. for the provision of our daily bread. Yeah. And the Bible is just basic instructions before leaving earth. Mm -hmm. And the Bible gives us instructions on what we should eat. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I know something that is very close to your heart is the is um, social justice, mm -hmm. and food also has a place in social justice. Um, yes. And what? How does that work together? What role does health play in social justice? So, so social justice, food sovereignty, is the center and the heartbeat. Because first of all, food should be made available to everyone because this is God's earth. Sure. And when you put something, a seed in the ground, that seed takes on the form of a woman housing a seed and bringing birth by manifesting the harvest of your daily bread. Now, this is something that we don't need a whole lot of work, horticulture doing because God's just created the earth to do it. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, because of greed, and greed always takes more than it gives. Mm. And because of greed, there's not enough food. Mm. Not because of God failing us in ecology. Mm -hmm. It's because of mankind mm. that we are shifting and having justice with food for everyone. Mm. So some of these issues have been strategically and systemically created because there is this one primary spirit that governs the world and its superiority and inferiority. Mm -hmm. And that has caused a problem because if you are devalued, you are marginalized and in marginalization, you are excluded from the table. And so you will not be able to eat. Mm. Jesus said that the poor will always be among us. And I don't believe he was just referring to financially poor. Mm -hmm. I mean, people to people who were poor in spirit because mm -hmm. society had created this dysfunction mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, that, so that you have those who are excluded from the table, inferiority, and those who are at the table, superiority. Mm. So is it, it's racism to some degree, but it's a, it's a dysfunctional value system. 
And it, is it because we don't see the value in every human life? Because we have been, so food solventry has been an issue in the Old Testament. Mm. Mm-hmm. It's it always was. been an issue. It mm-hmm. always Food has always been an issue because it was identified and substantiated as wealth and poverty. Mm-hmm. So you're absolutely right. It's dehumanizing humanity. Mm-hmm. And unfortunately, the sustenance of our daily bread is a major issue in that. Mm. That's always been, it has always been a problem. Mm. 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 <laughs> always been a problem. And always. it's sad that we haven't learned that lesson yet, that every, that we, that we still have this whole idea of status. Right. Especially when it comes to something as basic as food. We all mm-hmm. need food to survive. Mm-hmm. Yet everybody doesn't have access to it. And that is Correct. unfair. That's unfair. Right. Right. But unfortunately, we live in an unfair capitalistic society. Yeah. And yeah. there is a scripture that says, because of sin, and there's different types of, uh, you know, you have transgressors, you have people that transgress against you. You have people that just outright sin against you. Mm -hmm. You have the sins of omission and commission. Some people sin against you and it's not, they're, they're not being deliberate. And because of those variables, the scripture says that love is going to wax cold. Mm. And we're seeing that where love is waxing cold. So I believe that we, uh, what we have to do for those of us who are believers and practicing our belief, that's another thing. Love has to be our greatest aim Mm -hmm. because the scripture says they will not be able to recognize us, but by the love we have for one another. And it can't be preferential love Mm -hmm. uh, because preferential love is a, is a form of discrimination. Uh And so us that know to do good, we continue to do good. Mm. We continue to do good. But s- some of these systemic conditions will not change until we change because charity begins in our own backyard. Mm. So what we, we have to do is we have to create these gardens. We have to create a spirit of generosity and give to those who are in need and not function out of a spirit of greed because Mm. most people who function from greed, they don't give enough. Mm. And that's why we have a shortage because they take, take, take. Wow. You said something really powerful that kind of stuck with me just then is you said love waxes cold. What does that mean? That That we become so, we become so dense desensitized that we may pass someone that's, that's robbing an old lady or, or push her on the ground. Mm. Because we're because we're in a hurry, like they did this at this march, where the police knocked this old man down, and he was bleeding from the head, and his his partner pushed him so he can continue to walk. Wow! Or um, uh, like chasing a child down in the park mm. and shooting him in the back, mm. or like Sandra Bland mm-hmm. pulling her out of her car and. Mm-hmm. Mm. Like gray. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. So love is, and, and we become desensitized to it, even though it's televised. Mm-hmm. After it's gone, we don't think about it anymore. Mm-hmm. And so that's why we have to keep it in the forefront of our consciousness. Let us not forget. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. just, and just, so that's how love wax cold. Just then when you were talking about all of those examples that we're seeing playing live in the living color in front of us, um, it made me think of something that Mr. Rogers said in an interview. Um, He -hmm. said, when it comes down to people, it comes down to two things. It comes down to love or the lack of it. That's right. Um, And so when you say that love is waxing cold, it means that there's a huge lack of love going right. around and we're oh, functioning yes. out of that lack of love mm-hmm. 
a lack of sensitivity for sure. To life. For sure. Because, you know, mm -hmm, because I don't want to get, but you know, I think it's a, a, oh, it's so beautiful. And I can't remember it just exactly. But he says that God poured his spirit inside of our hearts as a deposit, guaranteeing what is to come. Mm. And God is what? I, rem I was taught that one. Love. God is love. And love is simply my son was inspired to give me this when I went to visit him. He, he's just a wonderful person with words. And he says, Mom, I give you this. He said, you know, the acronyms of love is letting out valuable energy. Mm. L-O-V-E. He said, and hate, Mom, is a habitual attitude towards everything. Wow. Mm -hmm. That's good. Mm -hmm. That's good. Um, and so the world will know us by the love we have for one another. But love is basically, and hate is an emotion. You see the manifestation of it through the behavior, and that's how you're able to identify it. Because when you have it in your head, you're the owner of your thoughts. Mm -hmm. But once you let it out, a, a little hip hop, one of the little rappers years ago had <laughs> given this analogy, once you give it out, you become a slave to it. Mm. Because once it's been manifested through behavior and we are able to associate that emotion with a word, we're like, oh God, that's hate. Mm. Oh God, that's love. Oh God, that's jealousy. If you do not allow yourself to, to allow integrity and in uprighteousness to protect you, because that's what God wants to do. So God shows us but we get to see it through people's behavior. Wow. Many people, some people have been working with people and they thought they were just so liberal and through all of this, which has happened and occurred, the behaviors manifest and gives the word of what? Hate, a racism, a bias. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm. Such a, it, it's interesting how this conversation is shifting toward, it was supposed to talk about health and nutrition, and we'll get back to that as well. And this but is health. And it is. Mind. That's exactly what I'm saying. It oh, is exactly like the core of right. health and nutrition is love. Right, mm -hmm. right. But if you don't guard your mind and your heart with all diligence, then yeah. out of it will not flow the issues of life because self love is the first preservation of love. You have to, you must have self-love. Yes, you do. And if that is messed up, your love for everybody and anybody else will not be, it'll be skewed or, you know, off kilter because you don't love yourself first. Right. Mm -hmm. Particularly us as women, when we know ourselves, we're able to love, respect, and honor every woman. She may not deserve it from your perspective, but mm -hmm. every woman, every woman deserves to be loved, honored, and respect. Mm -hmm. Every woman, mm -hmm. no matter where she is in life. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um so we're gonna come, we're gonna circle back here. Um you actually, so we talked about earlier in the interview that you actually just received your doctorate. Um, so you were the newly affiliated Dr. Alice Freeman. Um, so can you tell us a little bit about your doctoral work and what that centered on? Um, I called it a mother's maternal justice. Okay. A holistic intervention to reducing maternal mortality, low birth weights through good nutrition and self-care, parentheses, advocacy. Okay, so what does that mean? This means that my objective is to reduce maternal mortality in the corner of the world that God has placed me through using foods as medicine okay. to help in women in their in antenatal care in the earliest or before they get pregnant 
so that they will be able to cradle their babies through their gestational process. At the same time, reduce preeclampsia, which kills many of them with internal bleeding, high blood pressure, gestational diabetes, and believe it or not, simple dehydration. Really? And so mm. my job is to use the foods functionally, cassivorous foods, to ensure that women who are pregnant, women who are breastfeeding, women who are, have just returned from the hospital with their babies, that they're able to get healthy foods to give them the nutrients to sustain themselves through whatever process they're going through. So, okay. So you said a lot there. All right. So mm -hmm. when we talk about um, birth and we talk about mortality rate in the hospital, when we talk about women and their prenatal health, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. there's been a lot of um, stuff floating around on the internet, especially mm -hmm. about how um, there's no equity in medical care, especially when it comes to black women. Um, and their health, especially when it comes to their prenatal health and the early stages of pregnancies and also delivery. Um, right. What, so your, your work was to kind of pull back the covers on that a bit and then also be... To pull back the covers and also to give them a self-regulation kit so that okay. those women would become responsible for themselves as it relates for their blood pressure, as it relates to certain foods that they eat, as it relates to being able to communicate with the healthcare provider and ask the questions that need to be asked. Mm -hmm. They will become advocacy and hold healthcare providers accountable. The accountability comes when they're able to ask the questions, and then they're able to apply themselves to the results. Sorry about that. Mm -hmm. And that would be through uh, managing their blood pressure, uh, managing basically uh, their diets, and of course, how they engage with the healthcare providers. Because in most cases, you're absolutely right, discrimination is a big issue. The other issue is, is that it's interrupted care because you may start out with one physician for the first six weeks and then, you know, you come back 12 weeks, you have another one. So they need to have the continuity of care. Okay. And then okay. what happens is sometimes in the, in the, in the process, they become uninsured because they've moved to another area and they didn't let Medicaid know the insurance. And so they dropped them. And so oh. now they're uninsured and they're out of the network. And so they are going through the anxiety of trying to get back into the network so that they can continue the care process through their pregnancy. They also deal with, um, I believe one of the biggest issue is not being heard. That's one of the inequities that comes from how they were, how we were treated. What was the assumption about black women in their threshold for pain? And yeah. so we are, we are not listened to, but they don't listen to us because they assume that we can tolerate traumas. Mm. And so we can, you know, we can move our way through difficulties and pain. And so they don't assist us or they don't listen to us the way they should mm. and not, not listening to us in a lot of instances, then it's not taken into our records that we maybe had a blood pressure. You know, the blood pressure was 197 over 92, mm -hmm. you know, so that's not recorded because we're told you'll be okay, go home and relax or, you know, just kind of, you know, yeah, just sort of, you know, thrown on the side. If I, yeah, I can say it's, it actually is. It's actually thrown on the side. So you have many preterm births because of that too, because there's no accuracy in determining the birth date of the babies. Preterm. What yeah. do you mean by preterm? Preterm. That means you have your baby like 32 weeks rather than 42 weeks. Or mm -hmm. really? Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Preterm babies. And that, that's with the diagnosis 
of your of your um, of your gestational process and delivery. So if it's not done with accuracy or you're having interference in the care process because you keep moving from one doctor to another, it could be, you know, it could cause some problems. Because I'll, so I've heard of, have these, oh, sorry, I'm sorry. When you have these preterm babies, the first thing you're is at risk is their lungs because the lungs are not fully developed. Wow. Mm -hmm. So we just had a young woman in uh, New York who was 26 years old who died she, during birth, mm -hmm. giving birth. I heard the baby lived, I believe, yeah, and she died. And uh, they gave her medication that escalated her blood pressure. Wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. So that, that has a lot to do with interfered care because there's no consistency in your healthcare provider from the inception of your pregnancy to delivery. Mm. And that it goes on often in the African-American community. And mm. so what we're trying to do is develop, I'm working with the uh, Surgeon General and a team from NACHO, and we're trying to develop a continuity of care scope to put it in, in place where there will be some compliances as it relates to black women and women of color and women particularly on Medicaid and how they matriculate through their pregnancy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We're getting the quality of care that they need. That's so disheartening just to hear that, that that's a reality. Um, oh, yeah. and that that's going on. That that's disheartening. Disheartening. Yeah. But it's, it's our reality and uh -huh. uh, the negligence has always been here. You know, if you read uh, Harriet Washington's Medical Apartheid, oh God, mm -hmm. yeah. She, she exposes just how we have been so ill-treated all through the years, mm -hmm. from the very beginning of time, mm -hmm. you know, yeah, with the exception when we were, um, what is it, antiquity, when we were in Africa and we were kings and queens. And mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm. Um, yeah, that's, um, that's, 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 it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous that, so again, we're talking about another um, system of inequity and a lack of love. First, not access to the table. Mm -hmm. to the to eating eat. table, right? <laughs> yeah. And then we have a lack of access to health care. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And again, it's a lack of love for Black lives. Right. And, it's, it, you know, it's a, I love this scripture that says that the righteous care about the poor, but the wicked have no concern. Mm. And so we don't have enough people in, that are in the arenas to make the decisions by changing the policy. But your generation, mm -hmm. God has raised up another generation and you guys are going to get it done. Mm -hmm. Because we have more young people in official offices that we've never had before. Wow. And so I can see you guys changing the trajectory of laws. Mm -hmm. Once you change those laws, they're in place. Mm -hmm. And that's where you guys are headed. Many of you are headed there. Mm -hmm. So it's a beautiful thing. And I have, I have the peace and I really earnestly have the peace to know that you guys are gonna get them some things done, your generation. You guys are gonna change some things on the books of history. I pray to hear. I pray with oh, you. I see it. Mm -hmm. I see it. I see it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Each each um each generation, God just makes us stronger and stronger and stronger. And you guys are our voices and you guys are speaking our history and you guys are experiencing our pain and you guys respect us. Mm -hmm. Now you respect us. And what I believe we have to do is we have to trust you all. Mm -hmm. We have to trust you all mm -hmm. to pull it through. Mm -hmm. And I believe you are going to do it, not question it because you guys have courage, mm -hmm. but with the courage, you guys have intelligence 
And with your intelligence, you have the ability to implement that intelligence. Mm -hmm. If you can, you implement that intelligence. Look what you're doing. I mean, you're, you're capturing moments with people through this laptop. Mm -hmm. Your generation, mm -hmm. your generation. Mm -hmm. So I see it, mm -hmm. you know, and I just think for my age, we have to trust you guys to move it through. Because mm. I believe that you are. I believe I believe you guys are going to flood the voting. <laughs> I pray we do. I, I, and so, it's I so know you all. It's so interesting that you say that because I'm on the other side of that. Like, I'm concerned that we won't show up to vote. I know you are. Concerned. I'm very know concerned you, about this. You've never seen anything like this. For sure. In for your sure. time, for sure. For sure. This revolution is being televised. It is that. Mm -hmm. And it is a threat. It is a threat to the government. Mm. See, now, we thought that... Uh, the Black Panthers mm -hmm. were a threat. Mm -hmm. This is a threat. Because mm -hmm. they're manifestors. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. I'm going to hold on to hope then that oh, we yeah. will do the right thing. I oh, know gonna I'm do going it. to do it, but I just hope they're going to do it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's a collective body of you guys. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. All right. Um, okay. Uh, so I know we've kind of, we've kind of veered off and, you know, honestly, even if we do veer off, I think it's okay. It's all right. It's just a conversation. Oh, um, this is how conversations looking, go. They go this I'm way. I'm looking at, yeah, I'm looking at some of your questions. So whatever you want to ask, I'm here, but <laughs> it's, it's good. You know, and that's why you call it liberated too. Mm -hmm. For sure. For sure. Um, so going back to health, how do we take control of our own health? What are some of the things that we can do today that can help to start, help us to start to get our health and going in the right direction? Listen to your body. Mm -hmm. Feed your body. Mm -hmm. Know that you are a living being and you require living foods. Life extension to life extension. Every day I try to get something inside of me living. Okay. Okay. Every day I, uh, I try to get living foods inside of my system. Now, are Water you is essential. Water is essential. And now, are you a raw foodist? Like, do you only eat raw or? Well, I'm seasonal. So okay. you guys will sometimes see me put my wonderful red cabbage salad with blackberries, blueberries. You've seen that when I'm I done before. have. I need to get Pineapples, that Pineapples, again. red cabbage. Oh, God. And I use this red raspberry, Paul Newman's red raspberry salad dressing and pecans. Mm -hmm. Or you guys may see me make my kale salad. Are you guys, you know, so it just depends on where I am. But I know every day that if I want to perpetuate a positive life cycle in my body, I need to be eating living foods. If I want to slow down my aging process, I need to be eating more enzymatic foods, enzymes to break down fat, protein, and carbohydrates. It, okay, you can't so. just do one thing. You can't just juice or do smoothies because you need to chew your foods to create enzymes to help to protect your body and feed your body. So what are some enzymatic foods? Everything that's living from the Everything ground. Everything that's the living. Trees. Okay. Yeah. But yeah, until you cook it, you kill the enzymes, correct? Oh, wow. Okay. okay. And it becomes only fiber. Mm -hmm. Okay. So living thing. So raw. So that means the, the raw stuff. Your um, kale salad, your mm -hmm. spinach salad, mm -hmm. your broccoli salad. You can make a broccoli. Remember we used to do the broccoli, Kim, uh, um, with, the, um, with the carrots and the cauliflower mm, and the garlic mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. all of the seasoning I would make for you guys. Yes. Mm -hmm. and there, yeah. I need to get so that's a good one, Tiff. So you can do several different 
uh, salads because I love sweet. So I, I love making my red cabbage because that's ooh, for my sweet tooth. And I love, I just love marinating it. And then I'll have kale marinated in the refrigerator. And I may have mushrooms marinated in the refrigerator. I may have the broccoli and the carrots and the cauliflower with Italian dressing marinated in the refrigerator. I'm going so to the grocery these, store tomorrow. <laughs> all of these, and, and what I do, Tiff, I marinate them in bags. In Ziploc mm -hmm. bags. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And like now I, I I love this dish. I don't know why I'm talking about food. You know what I love? This I love. We're talking about. I love, <laughs> I love sea bass. Really? And what I'll do is, mm -hmm. and I I will use tilapia because okay. people have given tilapia a a bad rap. You know, because tilapia is originally from West Africa. Is and it? Yeah, and of course, their um, you aquaponics. Uh, when you grow fish in tank tanks, uh, tilapia is so good because they multiply so rapidly. Okay. But I will use it and marinate it, and then what I'll do is put bell peppers, sweet bell peppers, mm -hmm. on top. And I'll put okra on top, and I put a little avocado oil and more garlic on top. Oh, and Tiff, I bake it in the oven. It is so good. Oh, wow. Because I, I love okra. Uh-huh, me too. I, oh, well, you would love that dish, Tiff. I would. And I'll eat off of that for a couple of days. Of course, my husband loves everything I prepare, so he uh, eats it too. Because you're a good cook. Yes, ma'am. You know, he eats it too. So, yeah. I love That's it. That's a very easy dish to make. I love it. Do you put like a dressing or something on it? No, I just use all herbs. Okay. And I, I, I like Tony's Satcha Creole seasoning. Okay. I put that on top. And I also put a little avocado because the avocado oil tastes like butter. Oh. And it's just a, but the key to it is you have to season it to perfection. Mm -hmm. You have to make sure the fish is seasoned really well. And then you sprinkle, you know, your more garlic and, and, um, and a little seasoning on top. And then you put it in the oven and you bake it for about maybe 40 minutes. So good. perfect. So we have to get enzymatic foods in our bodies. And then also we have to make sure that we, um, when we cook all of our good stuff, we have to make sure we have all the seasoning on it. Just the right. Herbs are important. Herbs. Okay. Yeah. So that's why I, I'm, you know, I grow my garden. Um, my, my husband built me a beautiful raised bed garden. Mm -hmm. And I have like, I love cilantro because I put cilantro in all of my savory foods and I love green onions and I love bell peppers and it's another dish also you like zucchini I love zucchini okay so I have it on my um, clean eating website I mean Facebook I think I have it on the other one too but you can take a little avocado oil and a little butter garlic fresh garlic tiff mm -hmm. and a little of the creole seasoning and you can stir fry your zucchini, cut them in circles, stir fry them, and then get like a half a pound of shrimp, chop the shrimp up, and put in there. My mom, that's the way they fed us in New Orleans mm. with our squashes. They would add, oh, it's so good. Uh, it sounds good. And you, it's cooked, you cook it in less than 15, 20 minutes. So it's a quick dish. It's quick. Because shrimp quick looks dish. like nothing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they do. Right. Mm -hmm. you always put those in last, though, because you want you don't want them. You want them sucky. Rubbery. Them, not <laughs> rubbery, right? Right. Mm -hmm. This is good stuff. So we get some recipes we're going to try. I'm going to the grocery store tomorrow. Uh, so. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. And come back with your audience and talk to them and show them, Tiff. Sure. Oh, that's, that's a good nice idea. Show. That's actually a good idea. Mm -hmm. Um. Okay, so we got some ideas on what we can do and and because it sounds like a lot of what we need to do is eat right to get our bodies to get our health in check. That's right. It's mm -hmm. about the foods we put in our bodies to make sure. Yeah. Um, and now what does it mean for our bodies to be in balance? Your homostasis okay. and balance, body, mind, and spirit. You have a feel just that synergy of 
of connection. Yes. And so what has happened is, as, as I said earlier, unfortunately, we have taken the spirituality out of humanity. Mm. And for the sake of our health, your spiritual well-being is never really discussed. We talk about our mental health. We talk about our physical health but we neglect the care of our spiritual well-being. Mm. And your heart and your body is not going to go where your spirit's not able to go first. Mm. So mm. when your spirit is well, your mind is well. Mm -hmm. When your mind is well, your mind will take care of your body. Mm. But there, if there's a disconnection, you see the disconnect. Mm -hmm. Because... God says he's drawing us to himself with cords of loving kindness. If there's a disconnect, we're still going to have this insatiable desire to draw mm -hmm. to something, to something. Mm -hmm. And if the spiritual well-being is not balanced, you may draw to promiscuity, you may draw to sex, you may draw to narcissism, you may draw to anger. Am I making sense? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because the mm -hmm. spiritual component of your life doesn't have the synergy with the emotional, emotional management. Mm -hmm. If there's no emotional management, there's not going to be any physical care. Mm -hmm. You ever think about when you see people, I, wow, you see people that, um, have mental health problems. And yeah. I always, when yeah. I see them on corners and what broke them, mm. what was the disconnect? But I know yeah. the disconnect started with what? The spirit. Mm -hmm. Because when the spirit is, mm, is interfe it is interfered in the synergy with the mental or the emotional, the soul of a man, you see the manifestation in the neglect of the physical. Mm. Just like with depression. You first all start off the first day, you may not do any personal hygiene. The second day, you may not do any. The third day, there's a disconnect. Mm -hmm. There's a disconnect. Mm -hmm. And then when somebody comes, what's wrong? That's what they're gonna ask you. With something disconnected. And it's normally the spirit because the spirit holds it all together. Wow. Body, mind, and spirit. Spirit wow. holds us together. Mm -hmm. It's the foundation of who we are. And that's why everybody's people discovering themselves. And, and I just love uh, Pastor Watson. I really, because his approach to spirituality. Mm -hmm is not governed by religious experiences. Mm -hmm. it challenges people to connect to their spiritual being. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's not yeah. experiential yeah. religious experience. And I and I love that um, that clarion approach to dealing with the whole man. Mm -hmm. Because we have so much brokenness, you know. And I, and I think we neglect to deal with people as whole beings. We neglect to, right. like, because we go to like different doctors to address different things. That's right. That's instead right, of baby. In addressing the whole person. Come on, Tiff. Mind, body, and spirit. We come on. It's all one thing. Everything come is on, connected. Tiff. That's right, Tiff. That's mm -hmm. right. You just said it. So how do we change? How do we change that? Because we live in a capitalistic society sure, where sure. greed is primary force everywhere we go. Mm -hmm. So when we go to doctors, do they see us whole or do they see us as an insurance card? And who, who's your insurance provider? Right. Do right. they ask us about our spirit? How do you, what do you feel? What are you feeling now? My doctor prays for me. He stands in the corridors and he prays for me. When I go to see him, mm. when mm. I leave him, when he calls me, he prays for me. Wow. He's an old physician, but he prays for me and with me. 
Wow. So there's no superiority or inferiority because like I'm able to give grace in his life. He gives me grace through spirituality. Isn't that mm. beautiful? Mm. That so he beautiful. recognizes me as a whole individual. Mm. Mm. Spirit, body. Mm -hmm. And he'll ask me, you know, talk to me about my spiritual condition. Mm. And how am I feeding myself? And how do I feel? And has it been some spiritual traumas? in my life to impact me emotionally which has affected me physically mm. you don't find that because of most doctors you can't get to them until you show them your insurance card that's right that's right well, he's you? been my doctor for uh, about 20 years wow wow 20 years. wow that's a, yeah that's amazing you got to hold on to him i'm going to ask you some questions off the record once we once okay uh-huh mm -hmm. yeah so that's i believe that's important mm -hmm. uh that we address uh the spiritual man and approach health from a holistic perspective mm -hmm. if you want people to be well and you know in many cases you know they're giving us meds for this and meds for that and, yeah and you know and some of it you can do have some moderate changes in your life but you have to address it from a spiritual perspective sure absolutely absolutely mm -hmm. i have two more questions and then we we can uh wrap we'll, we'll go ahead and wrap it up um okay. I, have a, I have a sweet tooth it's terrible um, how do I manage that? I don't know how to manage that in a healthy way. Mm -hmm. You start your day off with protein. Okay. Because protein is complete and it sustains you. So if you like spinach, you may do an omelet with spinach, lots of spinach in it, and eggs, no cheese. Okay. okay. And onions. And then what you do is you make sure at lunchtime you have your uh, complex carbohydrates, a nice salad, and you may have a piece of tilapia or sea bass. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then what you do is you intelligently and intentionally give yourself, if you want a dessert, if you want something sweet. So if you want something sweet, you can buy the Outshine Sweet Bars. Okay. But what you'll notice when you do your complex carbohydrates and your protein, they will balance your blood sugar. And okay. when your blood sugar is balanced, you're not craving sweets because okay. you only crave sweets when your blood sugar is out of balance. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. So for you, you will start your, your day off with a, with a protein with you know, so say you do scramble eggs one morning. Mm -hmm. You're not just going to put scramble. You're going to put green onions in those scramble eggs. Does okay. That make sense? It does make plenty of sense. If you start off with a piece of protein, like a sausage or something, mm -hmm. you want to make sure, Tiffany, that you have yourself a complex carbohydrate with it. Complex. Okay. Mm -hmm. Because okay, so you may do you may do spinach. I mean, you may do a piece of uh, turkey sausage, and you had some broccoli from last night. Gotcha. You do your yeah. Mm -hmm. gotcha. So you want to stay away from your cereals and your yeah. Oh, so oatmeal. They convert into you? sugar. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they convert into sugar. So that short change of sugar. So what's going to happen is you're going to be going after sugar all day. Mm. And so they use a cliche that. Uh, that sugar is addictive. It is because it's it's an empty calorie. Mm. So you what you do is you use, you start your day off with your protein. Now also, you know the green drink smoothie? Because yeah. what it'll do, yeah. it, it'll help to cleanse your system also and it'll give you that sweet bite. Yeah. So I keep my mm -hmm, I keep my blender on my countertop mm -hmm. and you know, I'll throw some spinach in there or kale and a green apple and I'll have a banana. Sometimes I use pineapples and I'll make a quick green smoothie. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. I can do that in the yeah. morning. I have my little I like bullet. Yeah, me too. I like sweets. I love sweets. Mm -hmm. I love, I love sweet. You know, I just love, I, I love it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But a lot of my, um, I use, um, and then what will happen is you'll know your blood sugar is balanced. 
<laughs> because when you go after certain things, it'll taste overwhelming, like too sweet. Ah. And then you know it's yeah. Mm -hmm. I've been but there. That before. means you have to do the you've been there before. Yes. Yeah, you that means you have to do those proteins and those complex carbohydrates. Proteins and complex carbs. Mm -hmm. Perfect. So you have your zucchini with shrimp. Oh, you can have so much fun in the morning. Who says we have to do the sad diet, the standard American diet? That's what's <laughs> causing the epidemic in the United States of America. And people, wow. you know, and, and, and people are using, you know, like these diseases as a mantra now, like it's something, you know, to be proud of when a lot of these diseases are preventable by what we put in our mouths. And scripture has clearly given us instructions. Mm -hmm. Genesis 129. Mm -hmm. okay. So what you want to do is you want to intelligently, deliberately select what you're going to eat. So say um, you go five, six days a week and you treat yourself to a dessert maybe once a week. Mm -hmm. Well, portion control is important too. But what you want to do is you want to incorporate it, not in the evenings, but during the day when you're burning cows. I can burn it off. Gotcha. Yeah, gotcha. that's mm -hmm. right. So if I'm going to do sweet stuff, do, do it, have my sweet treat, have it around three o'clock in the afternoon. Right, or something. right, gotcha. right, right, gotcha. right. So if I buy a sweet treat, I'm going to go to like, um, um, oh God. Fresh market. Hmm, okay. Mm -hmm. If I'm going to get cheesecake, because I know they come from New York and I know Johnny's, is it Johnny's or Jimmy's? They make real cheesecake. Mm -hmm. uh, if I do carrot, I want to, so I want to make sure I don't go to Walmart and get my desserts because of the hydrogenated fats. Mm -hmm. I try to go where they use. Uh, not organic but true ingredients okay so if they're going to use butter i know they're using butter if they're going to use you know what i'm saying so yeah, you want to yeah, make yeah. sure that you're using uh, uh quality ingredients and the real stuff want, the real stuff that's right the real stuff you don't mm -hmm. want to use margarine and you know substitute eggs you want to know that they use six eggs gotcha um I that's real food I even heard somebody say that margarine is one molecule away from plastic. Oh God, everybody knows that. That's um, <laughs> Yeah, uh, it's not real. Mm -mm. God gave us plant source and animal source mm -hmm. and water. Mm -hmm. Things that are created without any of that to assist them is not food. Mm. Mm -hmm. If you think about it, mm -hmm. we've been permitted to do plant life, all of the green. It reminds us to worship him in the beauty of his holiness yeah. and the provision of our daily bread every day. <laughs> when we see things walking, when we see things flying, animals flying, when we see animals in the water, for those of us, because it's about liberation, your mm -hmm. choice, for those of us, we know for sure that God has given us permission to allow that to be a part of our daily bread mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and water mm, water, water is yeah. essential for ev water is essential for every living thing i yeah. i uh, i know simple. i know that when i drink enough water like you feel different when you are well hydrated yes yeah. it's a game changer like <laughs> it good really hydration is. it's mm -hmm. wonderful it really is, and it's it's powerful because if you put yourself on 64 ounces of water mm -hmm. a day, and uh -huh. that means if I start drinking my water at seven o'clock on a Monday, and then I finish it up seven o'clock the next morning, I've drank 64 ounces of water, which has uh -huh. dehydrated my body. And I feel like my body's really dehydrated very well 
you know, from my age, I think I'm dehydrated. And you can mm -hmm. tell, not dehydrated, but hydrated. You can tell when you're hydrated, like mm -hmm. you, particularly with your thought process, sure. how things move yeah. through your system. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. you're well, you're well hydrated. And I can see that. Um, mm -hmm. it, it's, it's a journey because I don't like water, but I'm trying to condition myself. That's what I do. And I love yeah. the way I feel. And so that That's has to right. be my motivator. Right, right, right. How you feel. I love the feeling too. So it's it's water therapy for us. Because mm -hmm. uh, I use the same practice with the, with the um, young mothers who are pregnant. I use the concept of water therapy because some of the municipalities is the way they treat the water, treat water sure. treatment centers. Mm -hmm. And the water has just hard minerals yeah. that really affects their kidneys, which is, which affects their high, their blood pressure. Mm -hmm. So we make sure that they get water, uh, clean, purified water. What uh, sources do you recommend for water? Well, I like Meadow Creek and I, purified water. Just make sure it's clean because water shouldn't really have a taste. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Water shouldn't have a taste. If it has a taste, is you know it's been cl clinically um, uh, induced with something wow. and sometimes they'll add uh, more minerals to it sometimes you know so you just really have to sodium sodium yeah mm -hmm. salt and you know yeah it's amazing mm -hmm. uh, so water is important enzymatic foods are important uh, these are yes. all things that we need to make sure that we our bodies are running to keep all the trains yeah. moving. <laughs> yeah, and we have to make sure that it's an everyday practice. It's not something we're doing. It has to be a part of our uh, consecration process mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. a part of our sacred self work. Mm -hmm. You know that sacred self work, and so that you know you're not so obvious when you go places with your friends and because I think if it's sacred, if you have the desire, God will give you the discipline for anything mm -hmm. in your mm -hmm. life to achieve anything in your life. God does not sabotage us mm -hmm. with having an abundant life mm -hmm. is what our desires are. Mm -hmm. And all he wants you to do is to have the desire so he can give you the discipline. Mm -hmm. One last thing. Um, you often say food is love. What mm -hmm. does that mean? Mm -hmm. God expresses himself to humanity in particular mm -hmm. with the provision of our daily bread. And every time we eat something, we know God loves us mm -hmm. because of the promise of him giving us our daily bread. So it's just, it's just an expression of his love and his provision. And then the truth of his word to humanity, because even those who are in deprivation, they still allowed to have access. We still get access to him through solventry mm -hmm. in the effort of relieving hunger. So that is an expression of God's love and provision. And I told you that the not having access has nothing to do with God, has everything to do with us and our greed, mm. uh -huh. taking more than what we give. Mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. this, is, this has been such a wonderful moment to share with you, Miss Alice. I know you're Dr. Freeman, but you're Miss Alice. And, um, <laughs> And I just, well, you know, I am so, I am so um, grateful. I really am. I'm so, so grateful where God has me, you know, and I don't want to be anywhere God does not want me to be. Absolutely. I want to be exactly where God wants me to be. Absolutely. Uh huh. And Absolutely. it's a beautiful thing because I think about godliness with contentment is great gain. And the godliness is just acknowledging him wherever you are, whatever you're doing, because we are his representatives. Mm -hmm. We represent him. And the easiest, I think, you know, it's easy to love. Mm -hmm. It's easier to love than to hate. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, thank you so much for sharing with us today. I appreciate your time. I appreciate your person. I appreciate the gift that you are to humanity um, mm-hmm. and, the, and the love that you exude. Um, but just being who you are, who you are. I love that. Mm -hmm. And I appreciate you for you. You know, I appreciate you and I love you. And I am standing in the wings of history, Mm -hmm. watching you move Mm -hmm. through what God has for you. Mm -hmm. I am so proud of this generation. Mm -hmm. Words cannot express how proud I am of you, God. Mm -hmm. I really am. When I see those babies marching and I see those babies articulating themselves and I, you know, in some cases they have had to make their voices known through their actions, but it takes courage. And I love courage. Mm -hmm. I love, I always, I ask God (laughs) every day, Tiff, I say, God, give me courage. Mm. to stand for what you want me to stand for today because you know it's it's changes god changes assignments with you some of them are short some of them are long term Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but we need Mm -hmm. courage to execute absolutely Mm -hmm. absolutely um miss alice if people want to get in touch with you how can we reach out to you if we need to if you google Healthy Hearts Plus or Alice Freeman, everything will pop up. But Perfect. it's www.healthyheartsplus.com. Perfect. And everything will, yeah, will, um, will pop up. So we have some uh, programs that are coming up uh, soon. I'm so excited about them, but I got to, oh, oh, I have to sit on a tight drum. Okay. Until it manifests. Remember okay. Remember you talking about, mm-hmm, yeah maternal our maternal matric spiritual maternal matriculation and so we're yeah when god releases us because we want you to know it's him gotcha okay Mm -hmm. all right and are you are you um on social media anywhere yeah i am i'm i'm always posting okay um but yeah i'm always posting but i've been asked to do a um a podcast i'm going to get with you on that Sure. To start a podcast. Okay. Um, and um, I'm going to see, but yeah, I'm on social media because I go into churches uh, um, virtually and doing teachings and God is so good. I'm, as a matter of fact, I'm doing something in Atlanta tonight. Get um, a vir- yeah, virtual teaching. I love um, it. With a group, a holistic um uh, health yeah healers so yeah i love it i love it um and so uh alice freeman is as we type in and we'll find you there on social on facebook and on instagram are you on instagram as well yes yes Mm -hmm. okay perfect um and uh so for uh so just want to just jump back into my listeners really quickly so if you you can find her on facebook on instagram using the name alice freeman um and go to www.healthyheartplus.com uh to Mm -hmm. find access to get access to a lot of the information that she shared with us today um as well as delicious delicious recipes yes Um, we have many recipes you can get yeah yes Mm -hmm. yes sir and as usual you can always find links to this uh, um uh, episode on our YouTube channel um, at Liberated Media, and you can also visit our website at www.liberated-media.com for the latest and greatest uh, with Liberated Media. Again, thank you so much, Miss Alice, for sharing with us. Today You're welcome, and for giving us now. Your when time. will this be made available? We can. I uh, will. This will be uh, available in two weeks, and I can give you more info on that once we wrap this up. Um, but this okay. has been another episode of Interesting People. Thank you so much for tuning in today. Be healthy, be well, and be sure to take care of yourselves. And don't forget to like and subscribe. I love you.